Every year, disasters across the world cost billions, affect millions and kill thousands. Hurricanes, tsunamis, droughts, plagues, earthquakes, floods, tornadoes and yes, pandemics. With climate change upon us and an ever-growing population, without change, the disasters of today will become the catastrophes of tomorrow. Therefore, a key question for humankind is what can we learn from previous disasters to protect people and property in future ones? Studying an array of previous disasters in the Western world, we have learned a lesson that can help before or even during a disaster to reduce just how bad it will be. Firstly, don't be led by a traditional older white man. Second, don't listen to the advice of traditional older white men. Third, don't be a traditional older white man. OK, so there's not much you can do about the last one, and I should know. But who you are and choosing who is in charge and who you listen to will increase or decrease the risk of death, injury and financial loss to a country, an area and to you. It's not that women, ethnic minorities, LGBT+, disabled or younger people are better at making decisions. It is specifically that traditional older white men are much worse at making good decisions that reduce the impact of a disaster compared to any other demographic. Two caveats before I move on. Firstly, the research here looks at traditional older white men in Western cultures, not in any other part of the world. And I'm not saying that every older white man is like this. This is social science and not mathematics, so there's always going to be exceptions to the rule. But the trends are there for all to see. So let's start with why you shouldn't be led by an older white man. Take the current pandemic. Here are the leaders of the three countries who in the West have had the most deaths per head of population from Covid. And here are the top five. And the top seven with Portugal's 63-year-old Prime Minister and 72-year-old President and Bosnia and Herzegovina's three presidents who are respectively 63, 57 and 63 years old completing the lineup. As a compare and contrast, here are the leaders of the top three Western countries with the lowest death toll per head of population from Covid. OK, as I said earlier, there'll always be outliers and Australia does prove this. But here are the top five. And the top seven. There's a clear and definitive pattern emerging. It doesn't matter whether they're either from the left or the right of the political spectrum. What matters is the gender, their race and age. Perhaps you'd say this is coincidence, but the more one digs, the less that feels to be true. Take the issue of listening to traditional older white men when it comes to disasters such as Covid. Right at the start of the pandemic, there were prominent and vocal voices disputing the need for a lockdown or as harsh a lockdown not based on any science, but because they believed they knew best. Then there were those politicians or their staff who chose to interpret the guidance much more loosely than how the rest of us were looking at it. Fast forward to today, and we do have traditional older white men who are advising for the vaccine and saying that the pandemic is very real. But there are also women, young people, LGBT+, and ethnic minorities in that mix as well. Yet when it comes to the leaders of the anti-vax movement, those who believe lockdown restrictions are too severe, or those who feel it is the right of conspiracy theorists to have equal airtime with doctors and experts, there's almost exclusively only one group who are banging the drum. There are many more examples I could give. And like the political leaders who run the countries with the highest Covid death toll per head of population, they share one very obvious thing in common. And no, it's not their ravishing good looks. As a society, we tend to lean towards listening to traditional older white men. But the growing evidence points us to learning we must listen to anyone but traditional older white men when it comes to facing a disaster. This brings me to why you don't want to be an older white man in the West in any disaster setting. With Covid, the numbers are devastating. Men are 20% less likely to get tested for Covid 
are twice as likely to end up in intensive care and are 50% more likely to die of COVID compared to women. For every 10 women that die of COVID, 15 men will pass away. And it's not just COVID that this manifests itself, but in so many aspects of life where assessing risk needs consideration. As an example, we can take the UK, which follows the same pattern as the rest of the West. Here, there are 10 times more men than women in the prison population at any one time. Four in five drink driving accidents are caused by men. You're three times more likely to die in a road accident and also three times more likely to commit suicide if you're male. You are two and a half times more likely to die from alcohol if you're a man, while 700,000 more men smoke compared to women. And overall, on average, you're going to die four years younger if you're a man than a woman. So what's going on? An emerging branch of study has called this the white male effect. This is where white men, especially traditional older white men, perceive the risks of health and technology hazards much lower compared to any other group in society. As an older white man, I believe I'm more invincible than I actually am. I know bad things happen to others and not to me. I'm convinced I know better than anyone else, including the experts. I won't have other people, especially those who are younger or women or ethnic minorities, tell me what to do, no matter how much they know and how little I understand. It means I take greater risks with my health because I believe I can dodge the proverbial bullet. If I'm in charge of other people, it means that I take decisions based not in evidence or fact, but by my own beliefs, which tell me everything will be much better than the doom mongers predict. Over the years, many people, well, many white men, believe this supposed superiority has been down to genes or biology. But unsurprisingly, research is reaching a very different conclusion. For centuries in the West, it's been the older white man who's been portrayed as superior to everyone else. This continues to this day in subtle and large ways from almost the moment we're born. And this shapes the way older white men think and act and, as importantly, how other groups do too. Close your eyes for a moment, and even if you're an atheist, think of what God looks like. I'll put a tenor on it that your image is not of a young black woman, but of an older white man, probably with a beard. In the Bible, it is older white men that are portrayed as knowing everything. Jesus, Adam compared to Eve, Noah, the disciples. The list is endless. Even to this day, this still holds true in the Christian religion. After all, it can only be a man who is a Catholic priest. And it was only in 2015 that women in the supposedly more progressive Church of England could become bishops. But it's not just Christianity that ensures that older white men are perceived as all-knowing. Here are a couple of smaller examples. As a child, you're brought up to believe that an older white man is able to travel the world at unimaginable speed while using his knowledge to give gifts to those he believes have been good little boys and girls. It is Father Christmas, Santa Claus or Saint Nicholas, not Mother Christmas, Santa Claudia or Saint Nicola who does this. The reinforcement of superiority is everywhere. If you're a traditional married couple, then a letter will be addressed like this. The mister comes first, the man's initial and man's surname take up the rest. The woman is a nondescript footnote of Mrs. with no name to call her own. She is inferior, irrelevant and an unimportant subset of the man. In the letter contained within, it may well be addressed, Dear Sir Madam or Dear Sirs, but never Dear Madam Sir or Dear Madams. Even saying it aloud feels somehow weird and wrong. They are little things, but examples of thousands of areas where all around us, men in the West are told that they come first because they are best. This continual cultural reinforcement that the older white man knows better means they don't listen to the advice from others, believe in their own superiority over everyone else, and are more likely to take risks and therefore die in disasters. Women, the disabled, young people and people of colour 
have all had to live under the shadow of us older white men. Yet perversely, when it comes to disasters, for them this can be an advantage. Because of this, everyone but older white men are more likely to react quicker to a danger or heed the expert advice on how to stay safe or avoid what's too risky. From wearing masks to not smoking, fleeing a fire to taking the vaccine, driving slower and sober to taking shelter from a tornado, everyone but older white men will be more likely to take fewer chances with their health or the health of those around them. That means their lives are safer, and if they're leaders, those they're in charge of are safer too. We cannot change everything in the world around us overnight, and much of this will take decades, if not centuries, to adjust, even if we all wanted to. And there's a large group of people who don't want that change. But for the disasters of tomorrow, we must recognise that older white male leaders are more likely to risk the health of those that follow them, that the opinions of older white men will be more carefree about risk, and that the actions of older white men will lead them to be in harm's way more often than anyone else. Rather than think of them as superior, we need to take pity. We need to help these men, who have so long believed they are special, begin to realise that they're special, but for all the wrong reasons. In the disasters and world of tomorrow, that just may well save many thousands of lives, including, perhaps, my own. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye.